another brand new episode of It's My House podcast. I am, of course, as always, your host, Chris Dees. And joining me today, well, she is, of course, the Diamond Diva. She's the most decorated manager in Ring of Honor history, which is just, just incredible, an incredible title to have. She's, of course, the one and only Miss Amy Rose. Amy, how, how's it going today? Thank you for joining me. It's going great. Thank you so much for having me. I'm really excited to be here. Awesome. Thank you. No, I love, love, love talking to guys and girls from Ring of Honor. I've had loads of people from Ring of Honor, all of Shane Taylor promotions in the past, Kenny King, guys like that. I know you've obviously had quite the relationship with Kenny King <laughs> a little bit later on. Um, but first of all, I, I, I always like to start off my interviews in the same way. I love to hear an origin story. So what was it? What was it for you that got you into wrestling in the first place as 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 a younger person? And how how did you find it getting into the business? I always find when I speak to female wrestlers that it's always a little bit tougher to get into the business than it is for the men. For sure. Um, you know, I think for me, what really got me into wrestling in the first place was I looked at it as an escape. I uh, grew up in a really religious household and it was very strict and there wasn't a whole lot I could do. Um, so every now and then uh, I would do everything I could to get out of church. And those days that we had church were the same days that SmackDown would air. So that was my escape. And it was like a, a nice freedom. It felt like, all right, this is for me. I don't have all these rules on me. Um, and it was all the, you know, honestly, it was the Hardy Boys and Lita and all the different divas. They really uh, stood out to me. They inspired me. But as far as getting into the industry and working my way through the ranks and getting up to where I am now, it definitely wasn't an easy road and it's not super simple. But I also think for me as a person, I'm very, very, very ambitious and I don't take no for an answer. So if I see a challenge and it's something that I really want, I fight for it. And that's exactly what I did. Awesome. It's good to hear that the same people that got me into wrestling, got you into wrestling as well. Like the Hardy Boys were were top of the pile for me, and Lita as well. Lita's hands down my favorite um, oh, diva yeah. of the time. Was but she sort of like her style was obviously quite different. She was very different herself. Did that sort of resonate with you and inspire you? Definitely. I just liked them in general. The group, the three of them, had such a unique look, and they were so charismatic. And they'd go out there, and it was just like you were hyped, especially being a little kid. You're just like, yeah, like I wanted to jump off stuff. And like, I really wanted to be the fourth member of Team Extreme. Yeah, quite, didn't quite work out, but at least at least you, you're carving your own. <laughs> um, For sure. Team, Lita, Lita would probably be a dream match of yours then, I would oh, imagine. Oh, yeah, definitely. So let's talk Ring of Honor. Obviously, you're you're an integral part of Ring of Honor, as I said in, in my intro just there. Um, the Women of Honor have obviously had a bit of a rough time the last year and a half, two years. I know, obviously, the... The title was vacated in January, January 2020, I believe it was now. So, yeah, pretty much a year and a half without a recognised champion to lead the division, essentially. Obviously, we're in, in the middle of the the, um, the women's tournament now, the, the Women of Honour tournament, which has been fantastic so far. How, how is it? How, what's the feeling like within the women in the locker room at the minute? Obviously, like... They're all they're all showing up and showing out at the minute. As I said, it's been a brilliant tournament so far. But is there mm. any sort of pressure? Are the women feeling any pressure because there's so much focus on obviously the fact that there's not been a champion for such a long time? Is everybody sort of stepping their game up? I think everyone's bringing their best. I think everyone's very excited to be part of the tournament, especially all these new faces, women that haven't had opportunities before. They're so uh, amped up and excited to get the option and to have a platform and finally show people that maybe on a wider spread haven't heard of them or haven't seen them in, in a wrestling capacity. So it's been really exciting for all of them. And there's always gonna be pressure there's always going to be that microscope, especially as a woman. Uh, people expect you to be really good as a wrestler because you're you're in a male dominated industry. But I think that all the all the women have been stepping it up in this tournament. I think everyone's killing it. And if you don't have some pressure, then maybe this isn't really for you. Like you got to feel that pressure. You got to. You got to always, all right, I want to do my best. I want to go out there and kick some ass. So I think it's been great. 
Yeah, mo I think the, the vast majority of people that I've spoken to have said, obviously, that pressure helps them to, to take it up a level, which, as I say, we've definitely seen that in this tournament. Um, and speaking of the tournament, I think you're... We'll, we'll get on to, to Kenny King and the guys that you used to to um, manage and lead later on. But obviously, at the moment, you're you're paired with Max, with Max the Impaler, which was a surprise to me. Um, not the most <laughs> obvious, not the most obvious pairing in the world. Um, how did how did that come about? Was that I think your idea, or did, was it just? So for me, it really was actually my idea. I uh, I had just finished things with LFI and I needed something new. I needed something fresh and I wasn't competing in the tournament myself. So I said, all right, um, let me let me see who's in this. Let me see who's a potential, you know, client that I can represent and lead to gold because I do have a good track record when it comes to representing champions. Yeah. And Max was the one that came in and just blew my mind. I was so impressed with Max's character, Max's presence. Max in the ring is an absolute beast. So I, uh, I, I saw a star and I said, all right, this is who I want to put my money on. This is who I, I'm going to bet. And it's been fantastic. It's been so much fun. And I, well, maybe not so much for my opponents and for the people that we've been facing, but it's been great for us. We've been loving it. Yeah, absolutely. How how disappointed were you, though, to, to not be a part of the tournament yourself? Was there a reason that you, you weren't included in that? Um, right now, my focus has been on managing and representing champions and chasing gold in that aspect. So right now, the cars just didn't align for me to be a, a, a competitor. But I think there's always next year. I think yeah. maybe even sooner than that. You never know what will happen in Ring of Honor. And I think that there's a lot of opportunities. And hey, maybe one day, maybe after Max is done with uh, someone in the ring, I'll <laughs> tag myself in. But uh, for right now, I'm liking the role that I'm in. And I love being a manager. Yeah. And with good reason, look at what you've done in the past. As I said before, the most decorated manager in Ring of Honor history and, and a woman doing that obviously you know that's incredible it's 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 pretty much unheard of like when you when you got into to managing did you did you draw any inspiration from any legendary or famous iconic managers of the past was there anybody that you looked up to because i know obviously there's been a lot of female managers or valets or whatever you, you want to call them um but there haven't been too many that have been even close to as successful as you so was there anybody you know someone like sensational sherry is somebody that stands out to me 100 percent. she's a huge inspiration to me she was an incredible manager um and then someone that i don't think a lot of people give credit to as a manager per se i actually thought miss elizabeth was fantastic in her role i thought that she was a very good manager um and babyface managers in general i think people kind of like oh no i think that's actually very important you can really uh make a big difference in a match tell a great story and amp up that crowd so I felt like both of them are legends, great examples of managers, um, but also a lot of the divas growing up as a kid, uh, you know, Terry Runnels and Stacey Keebler, Tori Wilson, even Lita, even though she was wrestling, she would always come out with the Hardys yeah. and she would help, you know, even the odds or, you know, sometimes get involved and make sure that they won. So that was the biggest inspiration to me as well. Well, um, when, when it comes to being a manager, like I've had um, I've had Vicky Guerrero and Ricardo Rodriguez join me on the show before, and they sort of they had differing opinions. But obviously, when when you're a manager and you're with a larger than life character, somebody like Max the Impaler, somebody who is like, whoa, really, you know, takes all your attention, grabs your attention through the screen. What, how how do you go about managing them without taking that attention away from them? Because obviously, somebody like Vicky Guerrero very much larger than life ricardo rodriguez again pretty much larger than life and they they both said that you've got to try and sort of not take the attention away from the your client but obviously still be ever present and have people know that you're still there how how hard is that to manage i think you know there's definitely a balance but i will say that the way max dominates in the ring and max's overall presentation it's pretty hard to take your eyes off of max I think my role in Max's, you know, uh, package 
is I'm able to speak for Max. I'm able to, you know, yeah. do the things that Max doesn't necessarily want to do. So I'm able to, you know, sit here and have this conversation with you and represent Max. And I'm also able to help guide Max. So I, I definitely have a lot more experience and I've been in Ring of Honor way longer. I know all these people very, very well. And um, so in that aspect, I think it's not very difficult at all to not outshine Max and, you know, to have that good balance with each other. So it's been fantastic. Almost a little bit like, I guess the closest comparison would be Paul Heyman and Brock Lesnar. I mean, you've got oh yeah, Smith for sure. Dominant in the ring, but not, not as confident on the other side of things, on the promo and the talking side of things. So that's sort of, sort of where you slot in then, isn't it? To, to really amp her up and hype her up. Definitely, 100%. Hmm, it's an interesting dynamic, because like I said, those guys before, larger than life, but the guys they were with could talk. Vicky with Edge, Vicky with Dolph. You know, it almost didn't really feel like they needed a manager, but I think you really enhance Max. And as, as I said before, didn't expect it. I was a little bit like, hmm, this is a weird one. <laughs> it's been great. The, the limited amount of time we've seen of you two together so far has been brilliant, and I really hope it carries on. Um, after the tournament so oh and Max is my favorite to win it by the way as well oh uh, yeah the good so, choice <laughs> so hopefully, <laughs> hopefully we don't see manager and client split like we so often do so so early into the relationships um right I wanted to ask you about um the current there's currently a bevy of amazing female free agents out in the world of wrestling obviously 99% of them came from WWE. That's just the way things go <laughs> these days. It has been for a, a good number of years. There's a lot of great women out there, like the Iconics, Mercedes Martinez, Ruby Riot, um, Santana Garrett. Are, are there any names you can think of that you'd like to come, see come to Ring of Honor and maybe help elevate that women's division even more? People who've got that WWE experience and, and you know the, the TV experience of WWE. And furthermore, if any of them were to come, is there anybody that you'd like to manage in the future? I think everyone you named are really talented women. I think all of them would really amp up the level of our division. Um, particularly, I would love if Ruby Riot was in Ring of Honor because she's fantastic. I've known her probably since I first got into wrestling. One of my first ever interviews was with her. I was a backstage interviewer. Uh, for a comic book convention and oh. it was funny because she was dressed as Catwoman I'm dressed as Gwen Stacy I'm doing a wrestling interview with her um, and watching her grow from there to where she is today is insane she is one of the best wrestlers I've ever seen and I would love to have her in Ring of Honor and that's someone I would absolutely love to represent yeah there's um from, obviously, it's all dirt sheets and rumours, but apparently, basically, every promotion wants Ruby Riot, and I, yeah. I can't help them. She, as you say, she's incredible. Her release from the Ruby was one of the most surprising ones for me. I know everybody talked about Strowman and Bray and all these mm -hmm. guys, but but Ruby, Ruby should have been in and around the top of the you know the women's division for me for a, for a good number of years. Um, Definitely, incredibly badly utilised. Let's just say. Um, right, let's talk LFI. You mentioned LFI before. I've mentioned Kenny King. How did that group come about? How did how did you become a part of LFI? Because that's that's one hell of a faction. Um, if you're there, you've got Dragon Lee, Kenny King, Rush, um, La Beche del Ring. You know, one, one of the most uh -huh. underrated factions is what I would say. Obviously, if you watch Ring of Honor, they're a badass faction. They're amazing. Everybody yeah. knows them. Known all across the world as well, if you watch a certain type of wrestling, like Mexican wrestling and, you know, that sort mm -hmm. of background. But in the States and certainly in the UK, I don't think they're particularly well known, which is a shame because the sum of their parts is is incredible. Um, so, yeah, as I say, how, how did that group come about? Um, how did you get involved? And Definitely. obviously, I know you had a bit of a, let's, let's be honest, a bit of a shitty ending. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, a little bit. But, but how did you spend your time with them? What was it like working with them as a unit? So uh, how that partnership came about was I was already representing Kenny, working with him for a very long time. Um, he's actually the one where I got my start and really got to show people what I was able to do as a manager. Um, and being Cuban-American, it was uh, really easy for me to be able to help translate 
and to bring that connection between Kenny and LFI. Um, because Roosh, Dragon, the minute they met Kenny, they felt a connection there. They felt like, all right, this can be something. This can be a team. And it wasn't right away. It took some time. It took a lot of negotiating. But it came at the perfect time when there was all these new factions sprouting up in Ring of Honor. And we needed to, you know, team up. So I was able to get them all together, get everyone on the same page. And from there, we pretty much dominated Ring of Honor for quite a while. Uh, and it was awesome working with them. You know, however badly it did end, the time that things were going great, it was fantastic. It was like being with rock stars. It was like, you're at the top of the table. You're always killing it. They're having the best matches of the night. And, you know, they didn't really follow the rules, which was kind of an issue um, and got, you know, got us in some trouble sometimes. But it was awesome. It was always really fun. And they are really incredible in the ring. Those are some of the best wrestlers I've ever been around. Absolutely. And in like, to, to sort of break away from kayfabe for a minute, how in, in real life and in your, your real working relationship with them, how, how disappointed were you when it all came to an end? Was, did, was there any sort of pushback? Did you guys just accept that it was going to end? Because it was, like you say, it was magic. It was a brilliant pairing. Another pairing that didn't really seem like it fit. If you put all four of you on screen at once, it almost, like I say, didn't fit, but it just worked. So were you sad to be split away from the guys? And uh, you know. I'll be, uh, you know, completely honest. Yeah, it was very sad that, you know, the storylines went the way that it did. And that's, you know, the way things worked out. Um, because I really liked working with them. And I really did uh, feel like, you know, these are my brothers, especially uh, Kenny King in particular is one of the people that I grew very close with, uh, working with him for, you know, two, three years now. So it was really tough. And it was sad. Um, but, you know, everything happens for a reason and it's crazy, but that's how my relationship with Max started. That's how I found that partnership. And I think it worked out for the best. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Every cloud has a silver lining. Absolutely. You've made the best of, a, of that situation. Um, as somebody on the inside of Ring of Honor, now, obviously, it d depends on what you like as a fan. Obviously, for me, I wouldn't put WWE at the top of the, the pile, but I know the the general consensus, the general thought process is that it's sort of WWE, AW, and then Impact or Ring of Honor, quite interchangeable there. Depends if you like New Japan, you could like MLW, NWA. You know, there's so many, so many different options now. But what, what I don't like is that Ring of Honor just sort of gets forgotten about a lot of the time. And I think a lot of people still talk a lot of crap about Ring of Honor, but they haven't watched the product in years because... It genuinely, and I'm not just saying this because you're here and because I've no, spoken yeah. to Ring of Honor guys in the past, but it, you guys genuinely do kill it every single week. Um, the way that you reintroduced Ring of Honor after the pandemic, after COVID, was fantastic. Why? What, what do you think that Ring of Honor need to do, if anything, or, or change anything, to, to really you know, push on and get out to more eyes? Is, is there anything you guys can do differently because as I say you, you, you're already doing everything you can in the ring and, and the pure tournament the pure championship is lauded constantly lauded as being one of the most exciting things in wrestling so why are not are more people not watching Ring of Honor? Um, you know I think a lot of that has to do with the names behind certain things and I think you know big companies like an AEW what people kind of tend to forget is that AEW was born through Ring of Honor and companies yeah. like that, like, you know, half that roster are guys that worked here, guys that I worked with, you know, very closely and that I knew very well. And, you know, I think it's the cool thing to maybe attack Ring of Honor sometimes and be like, oh, they're not good, whatever. But it's like, um, you know, those guys that you like so much over here, they were doing the same thing on this side of the, the fence and things didn't really change that much. I think it's just a lot to do with, you know, some bad press, bad names, things that happen that kind of hurt us and hurt our reputation. But as a company and as a product like Ring of Honor, like you said, we constantly are doing our best and going out there and killing it. And as far as doing things differently, 
I think it's just a matter of getting more eyes on us again. It's a matter of getting people to give us a shot because like you said, a lot of people don't even watch it and just go, oh, well, you know, this is how I feel about that. That's how I feel about it, whatever. Um, but if you actually watch the product, sit down and watch it, you're going to enjoy it. You're going to be like, wow, this is actually really, really cool. And like you said, the pure tournament, the way we came back, um, and just this, the hard work that everyone has put into making the product as good as possible. I think that's where I get a little frustrated as someone who works for Ring of Honor, because I want people to give them a shot. I want people to try it out. Then talk to me, then tell me how you feel. If you still hate it after that, all right, well, then that's fair. I can give you that. But I think you'll be wrong. I think you'll be pleasantly surprised and you will really like what you watch. Yeah, absolutely. I'm honestly, I'm always promoting Ring of Honor. I'm always pushing it, especially especially having such a good relationship with the with the promotion and guys like STP. I love STP. I think them, those guys and um, those guys and Alec High have really yeah. just completely, over, over the last year or so, have just completely bossed ring of honor and it's been incredible like you see so many people are missing out but maybe it's just down to the fact that there's so much content out there you know and depending on what's easiest for people to find wwe is so easy to to get a hold of and actually find and watch aw fairly easy but i know a lot of people don't have access to impact same with ring of honor same with some of the smaller independent promotions so maybe you know as i say a, a problem with having too much of a good thing for sure. I think, too, um, you know, something that people that maybe don't have access to Ring of Honor or have a hard time finding it, uh, if you have Fight TV, we do it for free every single Monday, 7 p.m. watch party where you can watch the latest episode. So, you know, especially all those people out there that may be watching this that haven't seen Ring of Honor in a long, in a long time, I'd say try it out. Give it a shot. And I, I promise you, you'll like what you watch. <laughs> Absolutely, absolutely. Um, as as a, a wrestling fan yourself, somebody who grew up watching wrestling, I know obviously you're you're very busy performing and doing what you do in Ring of Honor. I'm sure you probably don't have as much time to watch wrestling in general as you would like to. Um, how how do you feel about the Forbidden Door whole thing going on with Impact, AW, um, New Japan as well? Could we ever potentially see Ring of Honor get get involved in that? Because I know. A lot of these companies, sort of, as you said, a lot of the guys over there are from our, our Ring of Honor alumni, you know, people who are probably all still very close. I'm sure the owners know each other well, good working relationships. If that was to happen, would you like to get involved and maybe go the other way and do some stuff with those guys? Maybe get 100. Max, imagine 100. Max Nyla Rose or something like that. That would be insane. Yeah, I would actually love to see the door open because i feel like that would help get so much more attention and eyes on our product and the people in our ring because they deserve that shine you know they deserve to be seen and i feel like those fans that are reluctant to watch if they see us perform on aw wwe wherever it may be nwa you know and they see how good our guys are they're going to be blown away and they're going to want to see more. So I think that would benefit everyone. I think also just having the, the, you know, the prestige of all the titles that we have on our end and having some of those guys come over and compete over here. And I would love to see so many different pure matches, like dream matches between guys. I think that would be incredible. I think it'd be really, really cool. Um, and then, like you said, you know, the, the door opening for Max and us going other places, I think would be so cool. Like, particularly, my best friend is NWA Women's Champion Camille, and I think that that would be a hell of a match. I think that'd be a great place that we could do some stuff. So, who knows? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Britt Baker, Funda Rosa, Sheeda, women like that would be just, as you say, there's some, there's some absolute dream matches. I think the, the Ring of Honor women's division is very 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 underrated maybe because there's no but for lack of a better term no names if you know what i mean no no mm -hmm. huge ex wwe talents i know you've got people up there like maria but nobody actively competing like a becky lynch or a sasha banks and exactly mm -hmm. you know, that's a shame and people i think that's why people people maybe look at the roster and think oh ec3 
that's maybe the only name that I recognise and he wasn't treated very well by WWE so maybe it's not worth checking this out but I can't stress to people enough you don't have to know who the wrestlers are when I started watching Ring of Honor and sometimes with Impact and AEW even I, I don't know who a lot of them are because I'm just too busy living my normal life to yeah. study who every wrestler is and they put on some absolute classics especially like you said in Ring of Honor all those um, six-man tag matches that you got with the with the, the three-man tag belts are always mm-hmm. incredible. Always incredible. They always uh, kill it, yeah. Always, always crushing it. Um, how as as again as a wrestling fan, how do you how do you feel just about women's wrestling in general? Because I know obviously when was it four, five ish? No, three or four years now since um, the women's evolution, revolution really, really kicked into overdrive. And we've seen WrestleMania main events and we've seen women's tournaments like Ring of Honor and that focus. But then things have started to, I don't know, maybe sort of peter off a little bit. And there's not as much buzz and there's not as much excitement around it. Obviously, we had probably the biggest star in women's wrestling, Becky Lynch, take what, just over a year off. Um, yeah. Obviously, to, to give birth and have a baby in that. And so... How, how do you feel about women's wrestling in general? Are, are the women still being positioned how you'd like them to be? Because for a while, it very much felt like they were the equal of the men. But now sometimes, without wanting to upset anybody, it's it, it starts to feel a little bit more like they're being put there in those positions a little bit for the sake of it. Um, I think a good example would be Sasha Banks versus Bianca Belair at WrestleMania. That wasn't scheduled to be the main event of night one, but then it became the main event after a lot of fan backlash so it almost mm-hmm. felt like it was to just appease people rather than because they had earned it even though they had earned it as far as i'm concerned so what how do you feel about women's wrestling in general is it still going strong i uh i think it is personally because i'm watching all these new female wrestlers all these women come in and get big opportunities and they're doing so much you know like like the tournament that we're doing uh, NWA doing their stuff with Empower, like there, there's all these big moments and all these, you know, women that are fighting hard for other women to get opportunities. Like Maria has been incredible working with our women's division, and she's been fighting incredibly hard to put more more spotlight on us and to make our division stronger. So, I think. I do hear you when you say that, you know, you feel like sometimes things might be because of the sake of it or, you know, things might be petering off. But I actually don't feel that way. I feel that things are just going to keep getting better and women are going to keep going out there and showing that they can do this just as good as the the guys. So, um, you know, I think, like you said, there's some things that maybe sometimes you feel like, oh, well, maybe they're just doing that. But on that same argument... I I definitely think that Bianca and Sasha deserve that moment because they had one of the best matches I'd seen in general, not just a women's match. So, you know, I, I personally don't see it that way. I see like women's wrestling is getting stronger. It's getting better. And especially, especially in ring of honor, because I've been here from, you know, pretty much a really long time dealing with the women's division and watching what, what we had as a company go from, you know, not very good, not having the most opportunities, not getting enough time on TV to the focus that we have now has been night and day. And it's been incredible. So I'm super proud of that. Yeah, absolutely. Now, I've been, ask anybody, I've long been a women, an advocate of women's wrestling. Um, thrilled thrilled when we had the triple threat at Wrestlemania and, and the women really got that spotlight and again like I said they deserved it it didn't really feel WWE have long been known for let's do a first ever because we can do a first ever just for the sake of having another first ever but those women really really deserved it and I think ever since they just keep stepping it up and stepping it up quite often outdoing the men that things that the men you know like extreme rules and Helena Sal and things like that and, and these tournaments you know these tournaments have pretty mm-hmm. much always been exclusive to men like King of the Ring but now we're about to get Queen of the Ring and yeah. the women wrestle in Saudi Arabia and that's huge like that is that's breaking down walls that 10 years ago you would never have been able to break down so it's incredible yeah. you know it's incredible mm-hmm. what to do in such a short space of time as well um 
and going back to people like Lita, growing up as a kid, I will never forget Lita versus Trish, main event of Raw, first time the women had main evented and what that did. That was, that was really the game changer. For, for sure. Me. From that mm-hmm. day, what you do, we're like, wow, these, these women can go. They can, you know? definitely. There's a lot of talented female wrestlers out there, and I think the world's getting to see that more, you know? So it's been awesome. I love it. I love it, personally. Yeah, I do. It's about time. It's about time. Um, right, I want to I want to wrap up by asking the same question that I always ask all of my guests, but I like to, to tailor it to them a little bit about their background and what they do. So I always like to ask um, what your Mount Rushmore of wrestling is, but I'd like to ask you what your Mount Rushmore of wrestling managers would be. Um, you know, I think I named the two that I really loved were, you know, uh, Sherry Martell and Miss Elizabeth. Uh, you know, I think... Vicky Guerrero is someone that I really admire. So I would definitely put her up there. Um, and hmm, there's a lot. Paul Heyman is definitely the manager of all managers. So he would have to be number one for sure. Hard to put them in, isn't there? There's like Jim Cornette, Jimmy Hart, Paul Heyman, Bobby Heenan, even some of the more recent ones. Um, I, I really like Zelina Vega. As a man, oh, yeah. maybe, maybe not, one of the greats, but certainly on her way to becoming one of the greats. She's got, I, I just love that fiery passion that she's got, even get very often. Um, Amy, that, that's all I've got for you. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank um, you. Where, where can we find you on social media? Anything you want to plug? Any pro wrestling tees or anything like that? For sure. If you guys, uh, please follow me on Twitter, Instagram, RumbleBunny777. And my biggest thing, if you guys, please, if you like Max, we got these new shirts at shophonor.com, Beauty and the Beast. So please pick these up. These are awesome. Absolutely brilliant. And as I say, Amy, thank you so much for joining me. It's been a lot of fun. Guys, thank you for watching. As usual, you know where to find me. Just check the About section. You'll find my link tree. That'll take you to all the social medias, all the different platforms where you can find me. And yeah, thank you for watching. And until next time, everybody, thank you and take care.